Hey everybody, The Real Martian here. Well, tonight we're going to go over the building uh, of the grow uh, beds themselves. So these are the, the planters, the raised beds that hold everything uh, for the grow lanes that the plants will eventually grow in. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so here we are. We're getting all the materials, everything. Uh, a lot of it all pretty much came from Home Depot to build these grow beds with. Lots of trips there. Getting it all set up. Got the saw horses there. Got the chop saw out at the site. Everything is right there so we can uh, quickly put everything together. I laid some plywood down on the ground there and then used that as my flat spot. Uh, the ground's pretty much flat from all the excav excavation work that we did. So I built one bed at a time, and uh, these are 2x12s, and I went across a whole bunch of different types of materials. We talked about cement, we talked about plastic, we talked about wood, about pressure treated wood, and we ended up going with just good old fashioned Douglas fir, uh, and I chose that because everything that was going to be wet is going to have a pond liner on it. So uh, we could have went pressure treated. Uh, but we chose not to and that was pretty expensive anyway just buying this stuff so going with pressure treated would have been even more uh, and we talked about even fiberglass or carbon fiber uh, to build these things out of so the selection actually took quite some time looking at all the different options but again ended up going with wood and so far it's been been fine uh, we do have a little bit of mildew that uh, got on some of the cross members that you're seeing going in there uh, from the humidity problem. Uh, oh, here's one of the rocket ships. This is the uh, green John Deere rocket ship uh, coming in from Earth to the Mars habitat with our first delivery of supplies. Uh, that was a bunch of grow lights and some of the drainage items that we need for the beds. So here's our first grow light and grow motor installed. It was pretty cool that night uh, that we turned this on for the first time. Uh, now we're really used to it. You go out there, it's all purple like that, pink, purple. Uh, but seeing it for the first time was pretty cool. Uh, it really makes you feel like you're getting somewhere. So here we got uh, grow lights. It took about a day to get all the grow lights installed, just me out there, one bar at a time. We actually ended up getting um, another extension bar. Right now, these only have two uh, motor extension bars on them so it can go back and forth here you can see it right there it's kind of short on the the beam uh, it worked to get us going but we really needed to have a third to get the full distance of the bed traversed so we ordered those parts and got them put in later here's another rocket ship from earth coming in to help deliver even more goodies this is uh, more parts for aquaponics uh, PEX piping was my friend I chose to go with PEX even though it was more expensive because it is forgiving uh, you can make mistakes, quickly cut, and put in uh, different solutions. So uh, that was worth spending the extra money because I did make mistakes, and if it was PVC, hard PVC, uh, it, it would have been a mess. This pump right here uh, is just a pool pump, and it was way the wrong pump. I kept it in here just to say uh, you want to make sure that when you're choosing a pump, you get one that can actually have some form of head, meaning it can actually suck. And uh, even though I thought that pump could do it, I didn't look close enough at the uh, manual, so I ended up returning it and getting different pumps. You'll see those coming up. Each of the beds is lined with a pond liner and it's all uh, organic agricultural fish human food eating safe uh, again I got it off a of half price palms here ponds here we go we got a water test going folding the ends it's like folding Christmas presents which I was never very good at if you know when you wrap them uh, it took me a while to kind of figure it out and making sure that when you you get those ends and you're folding everything you gotta make sure they're put in there just right uh, or you will get water that sneaks behind. So that took some lessons learned uh, putting that all together. But here we can see we actually have liners in, lights in, and we have the drains uh, going in down through the middle. And those drains have given me a hard time in some cases. They're all sealed. Uh, they have silicone sealant around them just to make sure, and they're all they're hand uh, tightened in there. Uh, but it was a pain putting it all together and sometimes I I have one bed that leaks here we go you can actually see the uh, the sealant there kind of a nice little shot of how everything looks without all the rock around it yeah on lane three 
uh, bed three upper uh, it's just this one bed and there's some pictures coming up it just does not like me it, it always has something wrong with it so anyway lots of manual labor here uh, I was able to use the tractor for quite a bit of it but in the end we also just had to get the bucket out yeah I just had to lift a lot of this stuff uh, in order to get it all in there but yeah you know eventually all got in there we ran some water over it all cleaned up and the water actually stays really nice and clear even today with the fish and everything the water is really nice and clear so the systems working uh, the ground uh, you can see all the dirt on it uh, just looking at all this work that we did man and it's, it's, it's exhausting <laughs> it was exhausting and I'm still exhausted and spring's almost here I gotta get started again uh, this stuff really did turn out nice. Uh, this is before we had the ground cover on. Uh, you've seen all the dirt there. That was totally not okay. So here we're putting the ground cover in. I mean, just lots of back and forth. Patience is what you need if you're going to do something like this. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, over and over. Really quite annoying, but you just get up there and start thinking about stuff, and eventually you're done and there it is all the gravels in looks a lot nicer keeps the dust down which we, we did talk about should we use uh, bark uh, wood chips or rock uh, wood chips would have been cheaper but um, they would have carried a potential for bugs and disease to come into the system and so we chose to go with rock and I am actually really happy we chose to go with rock. It also helps with heating. There's about four inches of gravel there. Uh, so as it gets uh, cold out, you know, it does retain some heat. So that does help out quite a bit. Here's lane one and lane two. I'm sorry, lane three and lane four. Now we got all the rock in there. Everything's looking good. Yep, it's coming along nicely here. Uh, all the rock is down. We've got uh, the grow lanes are in, the beds are in. Uh, only thing that's missing here is the new pump. So we'll be having that come up here. And uh, I wanted to take a moment here. I included this next photo. This is uh, some of the footings that go underneath all these. So uh, we talked about it in a previous video. I encourage you to go back and check that out. But uh, we've made even upgrades and here is what happens when your footings give out this is what everybody out there who thinks I'm nuts for not having better footings this is what you're gonna be thinking right <laughs> darn it Martian this is why we told you not to do that oh my goodness when this happened I was so mad that's about 35 degrees off of top dead center uh, it was so heavy I had my truck tied to it uh, tractor one tied to it, another tractor tied to it and we couldn't move it up so I sat there and looked at it for a while and I just started laughing honestly I was just like you've got to be kidding me and uh, finally I realized hey you know what they can lift houses so we can lift this thing and I just slowly started jacking it up and uh, we eventually got it back up there's the new pump in oh my goodness yeah that was such a frustrating time uh, pump is in, lights are on. Uh, this was actually a, an operational moment here where we turned it on and everything was actually running. The water's flowing through it. Uh, all the grow lights are working, the motors are in, PEX piping is there, we have all the valves ready to go, and it's time to plant stuff. So we actually did uh, plant and we had things growing, uh, but sadly we didn't get to this point until it was already starting to freeze outside. So we didn't have very much grow time uh, with it and the system wasn't fully cycled. And when I talk about fish coming up, we'll talk about that a lot more. I said earlier, bed th or lane three, bed three, this is it right here. This thing just did not like me. Uh, it, because of the, the mess up that you saw where the whole bed tilted, uh, some of these things bent a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of weight, a lot of damage. We got it back up and fixed most of it. This, But this bed just... Yeah, there's just something about it. Uh, lane three, bed three. It is my nemesis, upper. Uh, all the other beds, easy. We recovered from the incident that we had. But that one bed, it always has something going on with it. Either the pipe underneath doesn't line up right or the... The wood has moved a little bit, or the plastic moved a little bit, and then I, the plastic wouldn't seal right, so I had to cut it, and then I had to clean up the inside, and then I had to use more sealant, and then I had to dry it, and 
oh my goodness, it was such a mess. Um, that probably didn't make any sense. But bottom line is the bed has like gremlins that run around and cause little problems to happen. So it is actually still down. That bed still isn't fully operational because I need to go figure out what the most recent gremlin is. Uh, I have a leak somewhere. Uh, it's it's above the normal spot where it occurs. So something happened. I don't know what, and I just need to go track it down. But um, you know, I did test them all like I should before I filled them all up. Uh, but then we had that big major tilt um, again. Um, you haven't seen it yet, but uh, I got a video coming up where I'm actually going to show you some of the footings that we've redone uh, and how we redid them. Uh, a significant improvement over what we had, but still not uh, the concrete that we would like to do. I said concrete, right? I got that right. The civil engineers out there, you're upset because I was using uh, cement instead of concrete. I totally understand why, so sorry about that. I'll work on it. Uh, know that if I say concrete or cement, I mean the same thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, the, the pilings are definitely my biggest failure. And when we do lane one and lane four, we'll have to fix those so that you don't have what happened to lane three happen to those. Uh, this won't be as forgiving. Uh, if it tilts, it could go right through the side of the building and that would be bad. Uh, I will say this, that on each of the pilings, I actually have about a almost three foot long piece of rebar that's actually whacked all the way down into the ground and bent over at the top so that if there was an earthquake or anything like that, it actually does help hold it in. I actually think that's why the uh, failure that we had there uh, wasn't as bad as it could have been is because those things actually did grab hold and do what they're supposed to be doing. So there is safety items built in. But anyway... Uh, that's it for tonight's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you hit that little bell to the left of the subscribe button, you'll get notified uh, whenever I post a new video. In the meantime, this is Real Martian. Out.